In this video, we're gonna talk about presenting your work. Now, I know you are probably getting a little nervous at this point thinking about portfolio review. You've been building your portfolio, you've been putting together all of your case studies, but trust me, you have nothing to worry about when it comes to portfolio review, especially this year because I feel we've picked some incredible reviewers to come on board. They are all well aware of the current situation and everything that students are going through at this point, so they are just here to help you. But this still is a portfolio review, and I wanna give you guys the tips and the advice on how to present your work with much more confidence. The goal of presenting your work is very simple. It's you explaining everything that you've learned in school, in design classes, from your professors, in critiques, you name it. It's what you have done to prepare yourself for this particular moment. You're graduating, you're taking your work out there, and you're showing people what you have learned you're gonna get a chance to dive deep into all of your inspiration, the rationale, that's everything you've done in your case studies, and most importantly, it's kind of like your decisions, the, the design taste that you have. What decisions did you make in all of these design projects as opposed to colors and typography and layouts? Everything that you've chosen, this is your chance to explain why. The first tip, it sounds a little boring, but trust me on this, and it's basically starting slow. This is a job presentation. A portfolio review is something that you will be doing a lot in the next few months. It's a performance of some sorts, right? This is your time to take and properly introduce yourself at the beginning. Why I say start slow is just take a breath. Once you've signed on and you guys have basically connected through the video conference and you see each other, introduce yourself immediately. Always remember too, you wanna to tell us a little bit about who you are, what kind of designer you are, what kind of design industry you hope to get into, what are your hopes and goals, what are you good at? It's real simple, I just wanna hear you tell us that. I've done a ton of these portfolio reviews over the last few weeks, and I gotta say, about eight times out of 10, I have to ask this question. So make sure you are being upfront, putting it out there right at the very beginning. There are a lot of blogs and different things out there that say that there is this demand for the multi-talented super employee. But trust me, it's not something you wanna to try to push at this point. You're a new grad and you probably haven't mastered every skill in the creative world and that's okay. And interviewers, employers, and these reviewers are well aware of that. It's totally okay. Be clear about what sets you apart though. That could be anything, that could be Something as specific as you love typography, that's where you're just pushing everything in. You love UI UX, that's really what interests you and you wanna get into. It. Maybe it's all about communication design, motion graphics, front end development, branding, it could be packaging, anything specifically that you are interested in and that's gonna help you set you apart when you're being considered for a job interview. So starting slow also includes this idea that you want to start with a clear sense of who you are. Don't be afraid to emphasize your passion in your introduction. Later on, you can mention all the other topics that you were exposed to, but maybe haven't mastered or are becoming an expert in at this point. So just make sure you're clear on who you are. Tell them a little bit about that. I love when a student talks about their, what they're passionate about when it comes to graphic design or design itself. So make sure you state it at the beginning. Tip number two is start with a project that you love the most. This is probably the most general tip. I, a lot of people do ask about what order to put your work in. I start with the one that you're most passionate or most in love with. It's not the one that's the most in, uh, in depth or the most detail or the longest project you've ever worked on. It's the one that really talks about you. So start with that, start with the one that you love. I recommend this at the very beginning of your presentation. This project tells me a little bit about who you are, your inner child, that thing that is very authentic and playful about you. They'll also represent your design sensibility more accurately. If I know this is something you really, really love, I'm gonna look more closely at the details of what you've chosen and how you've expressed yourself through this work. So keep that in mind. Don't start your presentation with some elaborate, huge project because that's just gonna hit them with a wall of text and a lot of complications to start with. Save those for later. Just make the good first impression with something that you really, really love. Tip number three, the four W's. You better know what these are by now. It's the what, who, why, and where. 
the reviewer doesn't need to know every twist and turn about how things unfolded with your projects, right? That will just make their heads hurt. Just keep it brief. Tell them the most important things as you're going through them. Instead, what you can focus on is this. Provide a brief intro of the project. Present the problems. Lay out those objectives. We talked about that a lot in the case study building, right? Describe your execution and then reveal those final designs and the measure of success. Now, you might not have measure of success yet because this might be a project that doesn't exist in the real world. But what you can put at the end is maybe things that you hope that this project or this communication design will do. What will it change? What will it, what gauge, how can you gauge what it does at the very end? So you can add those in there as a hopeful kind of suggestion on what you hope this design project and your solution will do for that brand or that client. Then you can move on to describing the next project. If they're interested in any particular area and you are going through these things, they will let you know. They will ask questions. But when in doubt, just stick to the what, who, why, and where, and you'll nail it. Tip number four, surviving the Q&A. So you have approximately 25 minutes with each reviewer. And at the end, you're probably going to have a chance to go through some Q&A. They might ask you some questions as we go through the portfolio. Questions are totally normal. Just be ready. These inquisitions are normal. They're not a sign that you screwed up. Keep that in mind. That's such an important thing to remember. I've seen so many designers wither during Q&A when, when they should be really proud of their work. All right? You've come so far. You've shown a lot of this great success and great growth. So don't worry about this. This is not them asking because you've screwed up with anything. They're just digging a little bit more and want to know a little bit more about what you did. A reviewer's job is to really push you and to prod you so that you understand you and your work. They want to be challenged with the design things and your thinking. They want to know your choices in the color, like I said earlier, your research, and a million other things. So see what informed your decisions. Make sure you're clear about it and communicate that well. Don't take it personally. This is the biggest tip, 100%. Just because the work maybe didn't clarify or explain it the best way and someone's giving you some criticism at this point, don't take it personally. Answer co confidently, clearly, and concisely when this has been brought up, but don't take it personally. Take notes and you'll move on to the next one. You may be presenting a unique perspective too. So perhaps a reviewer is just taking the opportunity to learn from you in your portfolio review. You might be showing them something that they've never seen before. So that's where the questions can come up as well. So don't be afraid of those, embrace those, and tell them more about what this particular project was if it's a unique perspective that you're showing and they've never seen that before. Tip number five, don't forget this, celebrate your victory at the very end. Your first one specifically, once you've done it and you have a moment to breathe, celebrate it. So breathe that sigh of relief. You've made it through the review. You've crafted your presentation to meet the needs of a portfolio reviewer, and you've had success. Each time you do this, you're going to gain more and more confidence. So just remember, once you do that first one, you'll probably feel a lot more confident and a lot more comfortable presenting your work. And guess what? It's on to the next one. So with each one, you're going to do better and better and better. Good luck with it. Talk to you soon.